Shalom, shalom. Back at it. I need Yehuda Hayoro. I'm Judah the Shooter. And we're about to get back at another one, ladies and gents. So, um, for anybody who's new to my channel, I'm going to share my screen really quick. Alrighty. So, this is my YouTube channel, as you see here. Um, Judah the Shooter. Um, so, Yehuda Hayoro. And uh, what I've been doing is I've been doing a lot of series uh, Clearing up a lot of the um, false polygyny myths So I guess you could say I've been doing a lot of series of those um, So if you are one who have been interested in the topics I've actually started with the First Corinthians 72 breakdown um, You know the scripture says uh, Nevertheless to avoid fornication Let every man have his own wife Let one woman have her own husband um, Going over the misconception of that scripture uh, I did one on concubine versus concubines on what is it versus what we've been told. Clean up a lot of the myths on that one. Definitely a good video. Um, this one, um, kind of a bit of a freestyle uh, with two of my brothers, uh, Judah Mack and Marshall Rathia. Uh, we were going over um, random topics. I might ask the question and we start talking about submission and things like that and, uh, and, and polygyny as well as well. We talked about that one. Uh, single sisters, definitely check this video out. Uh, she has no head. She's rebellious. Make submission great again. Uh, Exodus 21, um, uh, polygyny myth. Um, that's a really good one. Um, once you're done with that one, you have to turn around and watch this one, which is part two, even though I did not do them back to back. Um, but yeah, definitely part two, because I really, I guess you could start driving home with this one as well. Um, I'm going into the Hebrew language, of course. Um, the Romans 13, you know they say? You know, you gotta follow the laws of the land, if you will. So I dealt with that one. Then um, you have the doctrine that says, well, if you have multiple wives, can't have them in the same house. Definitely did that one. Um, you sisters um, who are married, you know, uh, you want to know if your daughter Zion versus the daughter Satan. There's your answer right there. There's no gray area in between that, you know. So, um, yeah, um, definitely good videos to check out. Um, I even um, put something on here as well. Uh, uh, Trayline Queens, of course, uh, if you want a discount uh, on the credit, want to get your credit going, you know, you want to uh, head on to them 800 clubs, you know, on your credit, like yours truly, uh, you can definitely get that going. Uh, you can definitely talk to me about that as well. Um, but anyway, so we're going to go ahead and get another myth out of the way. All right. So let me go ahead and uh, stop share and I have to reshare. So what we're going to be going over is first 10 minutes. First Timothy, the fifth chapter, and uh, we're going to focus in on the entire chapter, but we're going to go over a specific verse in here because this is a um, a uh, another one, another scripture that is uh, misunderstood. So we know Exodus chapter 21, verse 10 and 11 is one. I've already did two videos addressing that. Now we're dealing with the first Timothy five and eight. All right. So. I'll go ahead and read that verse first really quick. Let's see. All right. So, Ba'ashir Lo. Oh, man. No, no, no. That's what we're going to, this one, we're going to do in English. Um, you know, I, I like to balance it. I've been doing a Hebrew, English, a little bit of both, if you will. Uh, so today we're going to focus primarily on the English language today. So I want to go ahead and um, switch it over really quick. So this is the actual verse. I'll go ahead and read it first. So it says, but if any provide not for his own, especially for those of his own house, he is denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So we're going to be going over this, guys, um, but we're going to go ahead and keep it in context. We're going to start in verse one. All right. So I'll go ahead and um, let me see one second. I'll start video. All right. So, ladies and gents, what do we have here? First Timothy five. All right. So go ahead and get your Bibles out. All right. I'm going to do a little small little breakdown on this entire chapter. I'm going to do the long story short. We're going to simplify it as I always do. There's nothing new. All right. So let's go ahead and get it started, guys. So we're in verse one. All right. So it says, matter of fact, let me do something as well. One second, guys. Oh, yeah, here we go. Boom. All right. 
That's better. Way better there. All right. You can see the entire chapter right here. <laughs> I like this. Let me go ahead and move this. All right, cool. All right, so look at that. Look at the whole chapter here. So we're in verse one, all right? So 1 Timothy chapter five, verse one, it says, rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father and the younger men as brethren. All right. So guys, don't be going super hard on no elders over your church. Now, remember, letting you know right here, instructions for the church, dealing with a congregation. All right. That's the first thing we got to notice and understand. All right on how people are taking this out of context. So number one, instructions for the church. It's the first thing. First verse, we're dealing with who? Elders of the congregation. All right, don't be speaking harsh to them, all right? Yes, you can upbraid somebody, but don't do the elder like that, all right? You're not about to go, go in on your parents like that, would you? I would hope not. So, treat them as you would treat your parents in other words as again you can sharply rebuke titus 1 and 13 titus 2 15 but don't sharply rebuke or talk harsh to no elder all right yeah you might make them have a heart attack <laughs> you know that's an elder have some patience with them, all right so don't speak harshly to them all right now we at line two verse two it says the elder or the older women as mothers and the younger as sisters with all purity, which means what? Honor of a clean heart, guys. So the elders that's a part of your church, guys, the elders are part of your church body. Treat them like family and the younger people of the congregation as brothers and sisters. All right. Now, we're going to what? Line three. It says honor, which means value, widows that are widows indeed, meaning widows certainly. All right? So, you see, we're supposed to honor widows, support the widows, because they're widows. They have no family sense in general sense. But we're going to find out what kind of widows, all right? And let's keep reading because... Verse four is one of the most important verses in this entire chapter to understand the context of what we will be going over. So I'm gonna make it my duty not to go fast. I'm gonna make that my duty not to go fast, all right? So verse four, it says, but if any, but if any, widow have children or nephews let them first let them first learn what they gotta learn guys what they gotta learn they first gotta learn to show what piety but where they gotta learn to show this at at home that's gonna be very key very key let them first learn to show piety at home. Because remember, we're going to deal with that verse four. But it says, and to requite their parents. There's another key word there. Requite. We're going to deal with this, guys. I'm going to move slow. Requite their who? Parents. So this would be who? Their house, meaning their family. It says, for that is good and acceptable before the most high or before God. So, guys, notice in verse, um, notice it starts off with the first three words in verse four. But if any, but if any, this means what? That what was written beforehand was important to understand this verse, because obviously you don't start a sentence off with the word but. Right? Or a verse off with the word but. Okay? Keep this in mind. So, let's read this verse again so we can get further understanding on verse 4 again. Verse 4, it says, 
But if any widow have children or nephews. Now let's stop there. Now understand that this word nephew back then was actually referring to grandchildren. Also feel free to look this word up in the Strong's Concordance in the Greek. The word for nephew, I believe it's uh, ekonon, I believe. Ekgonon, I believe. And the Strong's number, I think it might be uh, G as in Greek, uh, 1549. But yeah, it means grandchildren. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and just pull it really quick. All righty. All right, here we go. Children or nephews. All right. Look at this. Grandchild. Grandchild. That's what it means. It's a grandchild. Look at that. Grandchild. All right. So let's go ahead and take it off. Make quarters. So as I said, it means a grandchild. And again, I was telling you that verse four is a very important verse. So again, this, this nephew wasn't speaking on your brother or your sister's son. It was speaking on a grandchild. Yes, some words have different meanings in the Bible. We know this, all right? And if you've been watching my channel, you already know. So once again, verse four, but if any widow having children or grandchildren, in other words, let them learn to first show piety at home. At home. Now let's stop here again. Notice it's telling the grandchildren of the widows. Of the widows. Keep this in mind. This lets me know that this lady is older in age. She's an older widow because she has grandchildren. All right? So it says, I mean, uh, so, so, um, so understand that these, um, that they first must first learn to show piety at home. Now, the first question one would have to ask is, what exactly is piety? What is piety? So let's identify exactly what is piety so we know what it is, so that it's so we know for the widows, it'll let you know. What it is so you can learn to show it at home. So the first word it says, to be pious, that is toward God, to worship or who? Toward parents, parents. Remember that's the context of what we're dealing with. But get this, to respect. Oh, look at this word, support, uh-oh. That's going to be very important later to support, show piety, worship. So look at that. You must first learn to support and learn respect at home, at home. If you are not able to show piety to your own household, how can you learn it at church? If you can't learn to show piety, if you can't learn to support, provide piety at home, how would you be able to show piety at church? You'd be worse than an unbeliever. Learn to respect your household. Verse four again, but if any widow have children or nephews or grandchildren, of course, let them learn first to show piety, support, respect at your house. Hmm and to requite their parents. Remember, we just got done dealing with this. To requite their parents. Remember the word piety at first? Towards parents and to requite their parents. Mm. What does that mean? What does the word requite mean? What's another word for giving respect? 
Mm -hmm. Providing respect. To provide means what? To contribute, which means to give. In the sense of paying it back to them. They're giving it to you, you're giving it back. Let's click on that real quick. To exchange, look at that, you're giving it back. Requite. Recompense, that's what, a payback. You're giving it back. That means they're giving it to you, you're giving it back. You're giving it back. Look at this. To give away, to give up, over, back. Deliver again. Payment made. Perform, recompense, render, require, restore, reward, sell, yield. Uh-oh, we see some providing going on here, don't we? Oh, yeah. We see some providing for a house. Mm. Oh, we're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. And I said, I'm not going to go fast. So what's another word for giving respect? Showing respect, providing respect. You're giving it back. You're paying it back. To provide means to contribute, to give. As I was just saying. So these families of the widow, specifically grandchildren, huh, or children, mm, they had to what? Remember of this widow, might I add. They were to requite their parents. That which is a good acceptable before the most high. Now remember, we're on the topic of who though? Widows, widows, widows. A widow, widow, widow. Keep that in mind. We're on the topic of widows. And it's a widow, widow of the what? Of the church, of the congregation. Half of these sisters is twisting the scripture don't even go to a, a church today come on now don't even have a church body they're part of first and foremost huh what are we talking here and some of these brothers who teaching this don't even deal with widows of their own congregation let's just be real so remember we're on the topic of who widows and families of widows showing piety or providing it at or I mean, in their house, their families. Not allowing the church to be burdened with them, which we're going to learn later. So understand that the children or grandchildren of a widow must first learn to show piety or respect and to provide that to their own family by requiring their parents. This is pleasing in the sight of the Most High. What I've been saying, so come on, let's go to verse 5. Remember, the story I was saying, but of any, but of any. Any what? Widow. But if any. So it said, but if any, those first three words, that I may mean, I have to read before that to understand. Oh, it's talking about widows. Honor them widows. Value them. Verse four, talking about a widow. Verse five, key word, widow. But let's continue. Verse five, it says, now she that is a widow indeed, or certainly, and what? Desolate. Oh my gosh, she is desolate. By herself, she's neglected. She got nobody. So that lets me know that this widow that we learning about, she don't have nobody. She is most definitely a widow. But she's a widow who don't got nobody to lean on. Nobody. Because mm. she's desolate. So now she that is a widow indeed and desolate, she's alone. Trust in God and continue in what supplications and prayer night and day so the widows of course are given to prayers day and night kind of like um what's that widow uh anna matter of fact uh and uh what's that uh luke chapter two let me go there real quick luke chapter two and uh I believe it's uh verse 36 it says and there was one anna a prophetess the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of asher which is asher She's an Israelite. It says, she was of what? A great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. All right. It says, and she was a widow about what? Four score and four years. What does that mean, guys? It says she was a widow of four score and what? Four 
years. That means what? One score is 20. So 20, 40, 60, 80. But it said in four years, which means she was 84 years old. But it says, which departed not from the temple. But what did she do? But serve the most high with fastings and prayers. For how long? Night and day. Don't that sound like 1 Timothy 5 and 5? When it said continue in supplications and prayers night and day? Look what this widow did. The same exact thing. So with that being said, let's go back to it real quick. 1 Timothy 5. And I believe what? Verse 5, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Verse 5. See that? Verse 5 again. It says, Now she that is a widow indeed, or certainly, and desolate, she's alone, she got nobody, trust in the most high, and continue in supplications and prayer night and day. So as I was saying, the widows were given, I mean, would, you know, give prayer, you know, night and day. That let me know she was always what? Amongst the congregation in that church. Right? This widow we talking about. See that? I don't want to go too fast. So remember, verse three, widow. Verse four, widows. Verse five, widows. Verse six, it says, but she, who's the she? Widow. Not talking about any woman, but she that live in pleasure is dead while she liveth, meaning while she is what? Alive. So if a widow is living in pleasure, she's dead while she's living. All right? Reminds me of uh, James 5 and 5, where it tell you, uh, matter of fact, let me grab that right quick. That's what the scripture kind of remind me of. Uh, let me just grab that. Uh, where we at? Hebrew James 5 and 5. It says, You have lived in pleasure on earth and been wanton. Hmm. So we're going to deal with that later. Wanton. Hmm. It says, You have nourished your hearts or your minds as in a day of slaughter. Look at that. You have condemned and killed the just and he do not resist you. Okay? So now let's go back. I'm going to change the Bible. Versions. First Timothy 5 and 6. Okay? So, once again, we see if you live in a pleasure, we see that's not a good thing at all. All right? Because it also said, First Timothy 5, that a widow was dead while she was living, as we were just seeing. Not a physical death, but a moral death in a sense. All right, meaning she's separated from the Most High God. And we'll be dealing with that later as well. But once again, remember, we're on the topic of a widow. It says, all these give in what? Charge. Now, that's another indication that Paul is talking to a church here. Because why is he giving instructions here? Who is he giving instruction to? that they should give in charge, meaning give as a commandment, that, matter of fact, let me, let me let's, 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 let's just click on it. Give in charge, oh. It says a base transmitted a message, the application to enjoin, to give in charge, command, commandment, declare. See that? Look at this down here, to command, order, or charge. So now with that being said, going back, matter of fact, I'll just get in there, take it there, boom. All righty, first seven again, what is seven again? It says, and these things, things given charge, meaning as a commandment, that they may be blameless. Who's the they that may be blameless mean without fault, without blame? Huh? Because again, remember, given as a charge, a commandment, so that they can follow these things, and to do this, so that who, the widows may be blameless. Meaning what? They have a great reputation. If they blameless, no one can point the blame at them on anything. This means once again they have a good reputation. So look at what it says about the church versus the widows. Remember that. So once again, we're on the topic of what? Widows 
and he's given a charge or a command that they may be blameless. Who's the day? The widows in the church. And he's given those instructions to them specifically. Now, verse eight, we got here a lot faster than I really wanted to. So let's remember something and reflect on something back in verse four. Remember it said, but if any, but if any, and I said earlier, which means you have to read before that verse to fully understand that one. And remember we had learned that it was talking about the widows, right? But right here it says, but if any, hmm? Because I said, you, you can't start off the word, of the verse with the word, but. So in verse four, starts off with them three famous words, but if any. Sounds like verse eight, but if any. Both of them start with, but if any. Let me um, highlight that really quick. But if any. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Common sense lets me know if I see the word but, I need to read before that. Hmm? That's common sense. So we see one of the first mistakes that people make when they use verse 8. Oh, man. But I won't go too fast, ladies and gents. In verse 8, it starts off with using the word but, if any. That means I needed to understand what was written before that. And we're dealing with the topic of widows. Hmm? He had gave a command or charge that they should be blameless. So, but if any, once again, just like verse four started off, but if any, that meant what? Well, you have to read before this verse to get the understanding of it. So let's continue. But if any provide, look out, support. That's what we're going to get to later. Provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, meaning what? Kindred, a.k.a. family. Family. That's what this word house means, guys. Family. I don't want to go too fast. Oh, yeah, there we go. House. Domestic. That is, this is a now a relative. Look at that. Those of his own household. Belonging to a house or family. Domestic. Intimate. Belonging to one's household related by blood, kindred. Dealing with family. All right? Dealing with your family. Your people. Now, before we deal with this, most of the people who use this don't even fool with their family. Their family don't even like that they even in the truth. In this Bible. Some don't even talk to their family. Hmm. Isn't that something? And then it uses the word any. Any. Right? But if any, huh? Oh, we're going to deal with something here. We're going to deal with something today. So but anyway, but if any provide not for his own house, especially those of his own house, he is denied the faith and it's worse than an infidel. Wow. So if he's not looking out and supporting his own, especially those of his own kindred or family, he's denied the faith and it's worse than an infidel. Now, this verse right here, many are misled by the scripture and don't understand that they must read before this verse one through seven to fully understand verse eight, which is speaking of widows, widows. But let's get some understanding. Providing what? What was we reading earlier in the chapter today? Piety at home. Piety, which is what? Respect. Remember we learned it earlier? The families of the widows also supposed to requite their parents. What is requite? Give, aka contribute, aka pay back. 
that's providing. So they were supposed to provide respect to their household. They first had to learn to do this at home. That's what they first had to learn to do this at home. First had to learn to do it at home, guys. This is speaking of verse eight. Again, it's speaking of widows. Widows. Oh, we finna unlock some more mysteries for y'all if y'all just using verse eight. You finna learn something today. This is speaking of widows. The understanding of this verse four was the meat of it. And we soon gonna get more understanding. So again, this includes the duty of the parents to provide for their children as well. Because remember, it was to pay back. So they had to provide for the children as well as the children to provide for their parents. Which is why verse four says to requite. You're paying it back to them. You are providing it to them. Remember verse four. Once again, in verse four, we had learned piety, to be pious. Look at this, towards parents, to respect, support, support, huh? Requite, to exchange. Look at that, one is giving it to you, you're giving it back. Recompense, that means a payback. Look at the word before that. Let's click on this one. Come on. Deliver it to you, giving it to him. To give you giving it away. Look at this. You're giving it back. Deliver again. Give again. Payment. Payment be made. Payment be made. Payment be made. Perform. Render. Require. Restore. Reward. Sell. Yield. Huh? You're paying off something which is due. All these goes into support and to provide. That's what this goes into. Let's not act like we don't know what words mean. Let's not act like that. You're providing it to them. So once again, what is Paul speaking of when he when he said they're providing what? He told you back in verse four already. And as I told you earlier, that was the meaning of verse eight. Remember the first three words in verse four and verse eight is, but if any, this means you have to read before that. This means you have to read before that to get the understanding of verse eight. Many people would just one line you, one line you in this chapter and not give the full understanding and the full context of this verse, but I'm not done. And as I was saying, the latter duty that we spoke of had already been enforced in verse four. Providing. Not in a material sense, but the duty of showing piety and respect at home. This wasn't speaking of monetary or materialize at all. Also remember the context of this chapter. This is especially speaking of widows. Once again, widows, one who has no husband, due to him what? Dying. He's dead and gone. Widows who's related to him, and especially widows of his immediate family, like a mother or a sister, etc. Ask the person who pulled the scripture. Why is this chapter in the surrounding text talking about widows? Why is that? Huh? Why, why, why is that? So, let me, hold on one second. Let me turn this back on, hold on. Why is that? Let's look at verse nine. So verse nine, it says, let not who? A widow. Once again, we still see the word widow. Notice all throughout here we see widow. Let not a widow be taken into the number Ooh we we're gonna see what that means shortly too. Under what three score years old? What's one score, two score, three score, 20, 40, 60. Because you remember one score is 20. It says three score. So under 60 years old, having been the wife of one man. Now wait a minute. Those who are using verse 8. Well, wait a minute, let's keep reading here. This would be a widow that is 60 years old 
and older, 60 years old and older, and only been married one time. Oh, wait. But, hey, you don't want to hear me, though, right? You don't want to hear me, though, right? Do you fit verse 9? If that was talking monetary, which is not, well, what do we do with verse 9? What do we do with that? Makes no sense, right? Huh? Any widow who had only one husband, y'all, and is at least 60 years old, should not be put on your list of widows. Remember, he's giving instructions for the church. Remember that? So look, let's look at verse, look at that real quick. Let me click on that, boom. Uh, any widow taken in, be taken into the number. I may show you this one twice. Look at this. It says, to lay down, that is, to enroll. That means to enlist. Keep that in mind. To take into number. Look at this. To set down, on, on in, I'm sorry, in a list, register, to enroll. Hmm. Let's see, look at this. And of those widows who held a prominent place, those widows who had a prominent place in the church and exercise and certain superintendents over the rest of the women and had charge of the widows and orphans supported, mm, provided at the public expense, which I'm gonna talk about later. Mm, mm, mm. This ain't got nothing to do with what people are trying to make this out to be. Nothing to do with that. Huh? Because look at verse 10. Well reported of for good works. And if she have brought up children, and if she have lodged strangers, and if she have washed the saints' feet, and if she have reviled the afflicted. Wow, this is an amazing woman here. And if she have diligently followed every good work. Wow. So now we're looking at verses 9 and 10. And things are really starting to be a lot more clearer here in verse 9 and 10, guys. Wow, we get in the context of that. So in other words, don't let a widow be taken to the number or enroll, aka enlist, right? Under 60 years old, having been the husband, I'm sorry, the wife of one man. People should tell about good things that she's done. Why? Because she's been raising children. She got good hospitality, taking care of believers' needs. Huh? The suffering or the afflicted and always doing good things. Huh? This 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 woman here, she has brought up children. Children grown now. Huh? This is very important, guys. Very important. So any widow who had only one husband and is at least 60 years old, she, I'm sorry, who ain't at least 60 years old, in other words, should be put on your list of widows. Mm, she only had one husband, right? Mm, mm, mm. She's not to be rolled in the body of widows who are to receive the church support. Speaking of this, as I was telling you earlier, lay down to enroll. We're looking up the meanings of those words. Huh? Let's look at that again. All right. Taking it to the number of, boom. Look at that. Enroll. There's definition. See that, guys? This is a person who is registering. Registering. Mm -hmm. But again, focus back on 3B again. Of those widows who held a prominent place in the church and exercised a certain superintendence over the rest of the women and had charge of the widows. And who? Orphans. These are the fatherless. Supported at who? The public expense. That's referring to people in your congregation. Huh? So even they had a general idea of what this is speaking about. And this ain't speaking of 
what people are trying to make verse 8 out to be. Who be twisting verse 8. Because a brother don't have a certain tax bracket. That's not what verse 8 is talking about. Nor can you make it to be that. When Paul wrote this letter, this letter, this is what he was talking about. And this is what he meant when he wrote it. The context of it. Sorry, sisters. You got no right to come down on your husband and try to use this verse. You got nothing coming. Ain't got nothing to do with no married couple. So you, you women who's using that, one, you're under 60. Two, you don't have a congregation. And three, your husband is still alive. You're not even a widow. And you're not even doing what verse 9 and 10 talking about. Anyway, you ain't probably even wash your feet. How you washing the saints feet? Relieving the afflicted and lodging strangers. Ain't nobody been where you at. You're not well reported of. Even if you are, it still ain't bitch you. This ain't speaking to no married couples. This is about those who are not married. And, and again, and it was said at the public expense. That shows that obviously a collection was taken up for these widows, these fatherless, as we do see throughout the Bible. Collections being taken up for the fatherless and the widows. Oh, yeah, you forgot that, didn't you? Hmm? Can't forget about uh, a widow who was neglected, as we've been reading the child. You can't forget about that. Acts 6 and 1 is, a, is an example, now that I think about it. We even know that times the collection was taken up for them as well, as we know. But again, we can't neglect the widows. You women under 60, you women under 60, be quiet. This ain't for you. This chapter's not for you. This chapter's not for you. You probably had two and three husbands in your lifetime. You haven't been the wife of one man. Come on now, stop that. It's don't fit you. Let's go to Acts 6 and 1 real quick. Coming back. Acts chapter 6, verse 1. It says here, and in those days, look at this, seven chose to serve. And in those days when the number of the disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring. Look at that, it was a complaint. Complaint of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their own, I'm sorry, because the widows, the Hebrews' widows were what? Neglected. They were desolate in the daily ministration. They weren't getting their share. Look at that. I would imagine, obviously, this is dealing with food and a collection. They were just what? Neglected. Huh? More than likely, food because look then the 12 of the multitude of the disciples said unto them and said it is not reason to do that we should leave the word of god and what serve tables so now we know what that ministration was it has to do with serving tables but this widow was neglected it says wherefore brethren look ye out among you seven men of honest report oh good reputation full of the ruach and wisdom whom we may appoint or ordain over this business, this task. But we will give ourselves continue to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Look at that. These widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Serving tables. They put people over that business. Sounds a lot like 1 Timothy 5. Let's go back. First Timothy five. Huh? Ask some sisters. Uh, are you under 60? If so, this ain't talking about you. Look at this. Under 60 and the wife of one man. It's not talking about you at all. Even if you was to try to twist verse eight. Even if you was to try to twist verse eight and try to say it mean that. It don't fit you. It don't fit you. You ain't well. Most of y'all ain't well report of good works. Y'all too busy 
starting drama on Facebook and running your mouth, being busybodies and tattletellers and all of that, starting drama. Is she have brought up children, large strangers? That means you taking strangers into your home, people who you don't know. Please, half of us don't even know where you live. Hush. If she have washed the saints feet, that's plural. She's known for washing the saints feet of the church or the congregation. Huh? And then she have relieved, meaning helped the those that are in trouble, troubled times. She got a reputation for that. It says if she have diligently, that means carefully, follow every good work diligently. Let's look at that word diligently. Look that up. Here we go. She have diligently followed. Let's click on that. Boom. To accompany, follow after. Look at this. To follow close upon. That means she did it carefully. She was on it. On it. Every good work. She got a good reputation for her good works. Not starting drama online. Things like that. Huh? This is a hospitable one. Hmm? And it's, it didn't say not some of these good works in verse 10. It didn't say she didn't carefully follow some of these good works. It said every good work or deed. And again, and if she's well reported of, as we read here, well reported of for her good works. What does that mean? Obviously, this means she is around someone, right? Some people. This is a woman that is clearly among a population of people, which will explain why he said instructions for the church. Sounds like she's a part of the body. She ain't off to herself. If she was, how could she be well reported of? Whose feet would she be watching and washing? And what strangers would she be taking and living in her home? AKA logic. Question, which one of you sisters doing this? Which one of you sisters who are widows doing this? Which one of you sisters are doing anything close to this? Which one of you sisters fit the bill? If you're under 60, not you. Not you. So which one of you sisters fit this? Brothers, if they try to twist verse 8, say, all right, well, look, keep on reading then. You fit that? Everybody know you for doing this? You under 60 years old? Wife of one man? Raised up children? Got grandchildren? Which is what the Bible called nephews? It's not talking about you. You ain't got no nephews, a.k.a. grandchildren, as we just got done reading. That don't fit you. How you fit that? But anywho, we know that everything we just read is speaking on widows. Look out for them. So if all this is speaking about widows. Widows. A woman who is 60 and up. Her husband is dead. Mm. Mm. That's dealing with older widows. Older widows. 60 years old and up. Married one time. But let's go ahead and deal with the younger widows. Now, sisters, this is you that are under the age of 60. Look at verse 11. It's also what's saying the word but. That lets me know we have to read before that to understand this. Because it starts off with saying but. We've already done that. Older widows. Huh? Elders. How to treat them. Right? And the younger people. How to treat them. Now we own widows, but the younger widows. Huh? So it says, but the younger, the younger widows refuse. I mean, don't let them do this. Because we just got done reading about those that are under the age of 
three score years old, which is 60. The younger widows, he said, refuse them. Don't let them do this. Don't let them enroll and enlist. It says, for when they, some of the younger widows, have begun to wax wanton against Christ. Let's get the Strong's definition of this word wanton real quick. Wanton. Verse 11, wanton. All right, look at this. To become voluptuous against. But let's get more specific. Look at that right there, guys. That's nice. To feel impulses of sexual desire. So this lets us know what? Don't let the younger widows do what the older widows are doing of your congregation. Huh? The younger widows of your congregation that is under 60 years old, don't let them be taken into the number, AKA enroll. Remember we were just reading that earlier. Don't let them be taken into number, which again means to enroll, as I was telling you earlier. Don't let the younger riddles refuse them because they begun to wax one time to feel impulses of sexual desires. Paul ain't crazy. He ain't crazy. These young women are still having them sexual desires. So do not include younger widows on your list. Don't enroll them. That's under 60. For whenever their natural desires cause them to lose their devotion to the Messiah, they need to just marry. That's what he's telling them in this verse. He, need, he, he wants to get married. What's he going to tell us later? Refuse them. They begin to wax one time against Christ. They will marry. Huh? That's what they're saying. Having damnation or condemnation or condemned because they, they, which is who the widow, have cast off their first faith. So a lamb is turned, they receive condemnation because they have set aside, you know, they they um they first commitment to the Messiah. They have sexual desire still and young widow that's okay there's nothing wrong with that don't feel bad because you got a sexual urge widow go get married go get a husband that kills that oh well you know i'm saving myself and all of that woman please you under the age of 60 come on now we ain't crazy and clearly paul wasn't either that's how you know you began to wax one time. He ain't crazy. It says, and with all, verse 13, which also, also they, which is who? The widows, but which widows? The younger widows. The younger widows. All right? The younger widows. It say, they learn to be idle. Lazy. Wandering about from house to house, and not only lazy or idols, but what tattlers, as I was telling, as I was saying earlier. But it also says what? Not just tattlers, but also busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. Mm. So these younger widows go from house to house, running their mouth, and other people business gossiping. Being a tail bearer, tail bearer, I mean, speaking about things they got no business talking about. And that's crazy because, and, and the sad part about it is, some of these single sisters is doing that too. Starting cliques, messing marriages up, causing confusion, going from house to house. Today they're doing it online now. So these younger widows ain't got nothing else to be tending to, nothing else to do. They being busybodies. Go go get married. So therefore, can't nobody have nothing bad to say about you. Speak reproachfully about you or slander your name. Oh, that's right. It's right here. The next verse. I will, meaning I intend, look at this, to deliberately have a purpose, be minded, to will, that is to be, disposed, minded, intend. Best word for that. So I intend, or in some cases you can wear the word wish. 
I wish therefore I tend for that the young women what? Marry. What women is he talking about? Those widows under the age of 60. Get married. Mm, mm, mm. So get married, bear children, guide the house. Not out in the street, but guiding the house. Give none occasion, meaning opportunity to the adversary to speak reproachfully, slanderously, mean slandering. Nobody gonna have nothing to say about you. Why? Because you're married, you're having children, and you're guiding the house. That's what you're doing. Can't nobody say nothing about you then. So these younger women need not to be doing all that nonsense, being busy about it, tattler tellers, or tail bearers, going from house to house, speaking things which they ought not. Then to get married, have children, stay at home. So no one can have an opportunity to speak reproachfully. You know such and such, you know she, she go on Facebook doing this, on Instagram, or whatever it is, this sites, Snapchat, look at what she doing. Huh? You have no room for that. No room for that. No room for that. Verse 15. What is said about these younger widows? It says, for some, for some are already turned aside after Satan. Some of these younger women have already turned after to Satan. Didn't say all of y'all, but some. And you know, that's fair. That's that's normal. We see it still today. Still a normal thing going on today. And notice I'm reading the entire chapter, breaking down every single verse. Every single verse. Every single verse. So this word, this way, you can't say well, Judah, he taking it out of context. No, he not. No, I'm not. From verse three all the way on down, talking about widows. We see in verse seven, he gave a charge, which is a command. This widow's, you use in verse eight, that's talking about a widow that was 60 years old and up. Only been married one time. This woman has lost strangers to her home. She's washed the saints' feet. She's been reported over well good works. We know who she is. She's in the, in the, in the church always praying. We know who that sister is. Don't neglect her. How you neglect her? Provide piety. Requite parents. No matter how you slice this, no matter how you view this, this is talking about a widow. Even if you want to say a younger widow, let's say if. That ain't talking about married couples. The husband is dead and gone. She's desolate, neglected. So let's go ahead and continue back to where we was. Let's go ahead and continue back to where we was. So verse 16, it says, and if any man or woman that believe. So now we know this is talking about who? Believers. Believers. It says have widows. There it is again. Widows. Let them relieve them. Meaning help them. And let not the church. Uh oh. Church. Told you it's talking about a congregation guys. Be what? Charged. That it may relieve or help them that are widows certainly. Now look at this word for charge right here. Let's click on that. To weigh down, to weigh down, burden, charge, heavy, press. Didn't I say earlier about not being a burden? I said that earlier, didn't I? I surely did. I surely did. Surely did. So let's look at verse 16 again. Oh, hold on, sorry about that. Let's look at verse 16 again. So understand that Verse 16, again, is making it clear. 
if any man or woman that believes, which is what a believer, have widows, let them help them or relieve them. Relieve them of their duty, if you will. And let not the church or the congregation, because remember, he was given instructions for the church, the congregation. So, and let not the church be charged, meaning what? Burden, as we've seen earlier, that it may relieve or help them that are widows indeed, not children or grandchildren only, but relatives of whom the widow had claims to regard it to their duty as members of the church to support them. We saw this earlier. So if you're able to help those widows that are neglected, ain't got nobody, help them. So don't be all on, just all on the church to do it. And if you can't help a widow out as a part of your house, then yeah, you would be worse than an infidel, meaning what? An unbeliever. You'll be worse than that. Why? Because at least people who are not believers would help a widow. Come on now. A, a widow that's neglected, an elderly lady over 60. Come on now, don't make, don't make that be a burden on your church body, of course. So if any man or woman that is a believer and has relatives who are widows, help them. The church should not be burdened with this. So help the widows who have no family members to care for them. Remember, they're older, they're 60 and up. They're 60 and up. They're neglected. They've been known for washing the saints feet, lodging strangers. Lodging strangers. Known for relieving or helping the afflicted. Known for diligently following every good work as we read back in verse 10. Every good work. Remember, we're still talking about who? Widows. Why would it be talking about widows the whole time and then all of a sudden talking about married couples right here? Stop playing. Talking about widows, entire chapter. Come on now, older widows. Come on, y'all. Stop playing. Stop taking these scriptures out of context. Man, we almost done with the chapter. <laughs> Man. So, verse 17. Let's remember we still on the topics of these widows. Now we got elders. What elders is this? Of your congregation. It says, let the elders that rule, rule, be counted worthy of double honor especially they who labor meaning work in the word work in the word that means in preaching then it says in doctrine which is teaching so these are elders that are preaching and teaching they working their job is to work in the word that's what they doing that's their job so it says let the elders be counted worthy of double honor what does honor mean like the honor road no no, no. A value. That is what? Money. Paid. Paid. Yes, guys. It says paid. Collectively values. Look at this. To the highest degree. Dignity itself. Honor. Precious. Price on. Huh? Look at this. Of the price itself. Of the price paid. Received for a person or thing. Bought or sold. Honor which belongs to um, or is shown to one of honor, which has been reason of rank and state of office, which he holds. But get this, though, we know this had to do with paid. Modern, we know that is monetarily. We'll find out why. Again, the elders who are in charge are ruled. Right. Them that rule that are in charge double honor for them who are labor or working in word and preaching so elders who are in charge and handle their duties well what they're known for what helping these widows preaching and teaching in the word they get double honor they should be considered worthy of double compensation 
especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching. We just looked at the word honor, dealing with price. Huh? Money paid. So make sure you pay him double. This has nothing to do with when people say, oh, you don't want to get double honors to my elders. <laughs> no. Well, give them double pay then, because that's what that means. That's what that means. <laughs> and you giving double honors to the same elders that that uh, uh, that, that you're speaking of, not even looking out for the widows of the congregation, probably. <laughs> At that. <laughs> Come on now. At that. So this has nothing to do with that, guys. But again, how do we know another reason how we know it's talking about money? Monetarily. Look at this right here. Next verse. For the scripture have said, this time I do Deuteronomy uh, almost at 25 and 4, actually. It says, Thou should not muzzle the ox that shreddeth the grain or the corn, in other words. It says, and the laborer, which is who? The worker. Remember, we just got in talking about elders, right, who are laboring. So it says, and the laborer is worthy of his reward, meaning what? His pay. Same thing we read in Luke 10 and 7. But look at this reward, primary word, pay for service, literally or figuratively, good or bad, higher reward, wages. Dues pay for work or labor, wages, higher. Look at that. That's what that's talking about. So here it is. That's how you show double honors to the elders, especially those who labor, meaning work, they're working in the word, the scriptures, and doctrine, which is teachings. So, brothers want to use that scripture? All right, cool, pay up. This is what it is. Help them. Mm, mm, mm. That's just what it is. That's just what it is. So we're getting through it. Verse 19, it says, against an elder receive not an accusation or a complaint, but before two or three witnesses. So don't accept the accusation against an elder unless it's supported by two or three witnesses. That is basically what it's saying. Verse 20. Verse 20. It says, them that sin rebuke before everybody, meaning all, that others also may fear. So again, if they're going off, get two or three witnesses and rebuke their foolishness, whatever the complaint is about. And if they're in sin, a.k.a. violation, all right, cool. If they are, others may hear and fear. And of course, they won't do things like this. At least they'll be more afraid when they do something like that. <laughs> all right. And this is, again, it's how you know this is talking about those of your congregation. Those of your congregation, you got two or three witnesses. All right. Then it says, I charge. There that word charge. I command thee before God and the master, Yeshua HaMashiach, or which in English it says, Lord Jesus Christ. It says, and the elect, that thou observe these things without preferring or prejudging one before another, doing nothing by partiality, meaning what? By favoritism. Don't be doing favoritism. See that? Boom. All right? Respect of persons. Don't do that. All right? So this is referring, this is referring to um, um, one of the judgment in a sense. You know what I'm saying? So which we uh, we, we shall stand before the most high in Christ, the elect of his angels, what you're saying? Right? Who the witness of this conversation? So don't be no respect of persons. Gotta make righteous judgment as commanded in Leviticus 19 15. Don't be showing favoritism in, in your judgment. All right. So, verse 22, it says, laying hands, laying hands or ordain or to a point, suddenly mean quickly no man. Need to be partaker of other men's sins. Keep yourself pure. Keep yourself pure, whole, wholesome, good, clean, huh? pure. Keep yourself pure, clean. Look at that. 
innocent, modest, perfect, chaste, clean, pure. All right? Agnos. All right? That's what it's saying there. Don't be so quick to be like, oh, yeah. Oh, they go, oh, such and such. And we're going to lay hands on that brother right there. Let's go ahead and ordain him. Let's appoint him. No, don't do that subtly. Don't do that. All right? He might turn around and be crazy or not. Verse 23. Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thy often infirmities. That means sicknesses. So, yeah, your stomach hurting a little bit? Get you some little red wine in your system there. Nothing wrong with that. All right? A little weakness, sickness? Cool. Drink a little wine. Nothing wrong with that. All right? So, oh, yeah, and then understand Paul is not uh, enjoying to abstain from water. You know what I'm saying? Or is, uh, um, you know, he's not even saying you can't even uh, abstain entirely from wine. You have a stomach problem, drink a little bit, you know, but you know you got to drink in a moderation. But that's a whole other topic. We getting through it. Verse 24. It says, matter of fact, I can take it off this. Verse 24, it says, um, some men's sins are open, meaning what is obvious beforehand. <laughs> so, you know, you say some, you see, oh, pfft, he definitely a sinner. I can see it right now. So some men's sins are open, meaning it's obvious. Let me see, does it say obvious? Let me make sure, make sure. Because that's what I get from that. I ain't afraid to say I don't know. So I'm saying are open beforehand. Yeah, plain before all men. Yep, see, that is obvious. There we go. Evident. That's the word I want right there. It's evident. That's a known fact. We know that such and such is a sinner. We know it. I'm glad I got this right. At least I know I ain't just talking crazy. <laughs> you know, I put my own self on the spot. Boom. You know, some men are open. Okay, I look at that as obvious. It's evident. That's the word I want. Evidence, a known fact. It is clear. His sins are clear what? Not afterwards, but before. Beforehand. All right? It says going before to what? To judgment. This is another indication of how you know that there has to be a hierarchy set up here. There has to be some sort of rank system right here. Dealing with elders and children. Oh, not children. Uh, yeah, well, children to a congregation, if you will. Because there's a judgment being set up in here. So we know that, okay, cool. We got to go holler at somebody. Who? The elders. Hmm. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Isn't that something? So, it says, well, we had, um, um, some men's sins are open or obvious beforehand or evident beforehand before going to judgment. And some men, they follow after or reveal after. So this speaks for itself. In some cases, you already know the person is in sin before y'all have in court about the matter. Situation, you already know y'all. All right? And some, you won't know until afterwards. You know, you need more information. All right, well, your, your story makes sense, but let me see what else is going to be said first. Hmm. Verse 25, it says, and likewise, mean just like also good works, deeds, right? Now that's first, good works or deeds, right? So people ain't be doing good things, right? So likewise, just like also the good deeds or works of some are manifest or revealed beforehand. See that? It says, and they that are otherwise cannot be hid. So some things goes, you know what I'm saying? Some things that goes, you know, for good deeds or good works, some are in the open, or should I say plain sight, you know, and then some that are not so plain. But even them, it cannot be hidden. I mean, it will be known later, at least later. You know, so now we know the context of the entire chapter, which is about widows. Did I say widows? Yeah, widows, women who are uh, um, women who are 60 and above, 60 and older, who has good works and of a good reputation and widows of a congregation. Huh? Widows who have raised up children, lodged strangers, washed the saints feet, 
She got a reputation for that. The saints are the holy ones. She's washed their feet. She prays night and day. She's helped those that are afflicted, aka those who are in trouble. She is one who have a rap sheet for doing this. Remember this woman who was a widow, only been the husband of one husband. She ain't no baby mama, ain't had several husbands, multiple baby daddies and sexual partners. Brothers, don't let these wicked women who are using this scripture to leave you and to make you feel bad because you don't have a certain tax bracket at all. Don't let these women who's been a horrible example under the age of 60 years old had one husband tell you anything. And again, this ain't talking about every sister, only the wicked ones. Just like I would tell a brother who was wicked. No respect of persons. But right now we own the, only the sisters who are wicked. Only those sisters and brothers who be using this scripture so they can take another man's wife. Man, y'all be surprised at some of the counsel that I have. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. But even again down here, you know, some would have a problem with this. Uh, uh, who teach this? Are you giving your, uh, your elder double honor? Are you paying him for what he doing? Huh? You giving him uh, uh, his reward? The labor is worthy of his reward. That's talking about payment right there. Are you doing that? Huh? Is your congregation being righteous before judgment? And remember, everybody can't be in the judgment seat either. I'm going to say that again. Everybody can't be in the judgment seat. So you got people in congregations, and this is no shot at nobody, but how are you in a congregation making judgments and yet you don't even qualify for that? Those who have the original King James Bible, the 1611 edition Bible, let's go to the book of Sirach, chapter 38. Let's deal with that. Let me share my screen again. Ecclesiasticus, also known as the book of Sirach, Go to chapter 38. Let's go there real quick. Chapter 38. Uh-oh, man. Starting 24. All right. So it says, Ecclesiastes, also known as the book of Sirach. Chapter 38, it says, the wisdom of a learned man. That's the key word right there, a learned man. One who's wise. It says, cometh by opportunity of leisure and he that have little business shall become wise now wait a minute guys wait a minute there what does that mean what does that mean there hmm? it says the wisdom of a learned man and by opportunity of leisure opportunity of leisure hmm? what does that mean there Opportunity of leisure. And he that have what? Little business shall become wise. Wait a minute. So it says the wisdom of a learned man coming by opportunity of leisure. That means what? Free time. He got a lot of time on his hands. You know, people say, you got too much time on your hands. So... The wisdom of a learned man coming by opportunity of free time. He got time on his hands. Hmm? He got free time. He got free time to do something. So it says, and he that have little business, he ain't got a lot to do, shall become wise. Wow. So that means everybody ain't fit for a nine to five either. Let's just be honest. But let's continue, though. Oh, we. So verse 25, it says, how can he get wisdom that holdeth the plow? Wow. Sounds like work, don't it? Yes. It says, and that glory, that glory of the gold that driveth the oxen that is occupied in their labors. 
in their labors. That would be today what you call their nine to five. And whose talk is of bullocks. It says, he giveth his mind to make furrows and is diligent to give kind fodder. So every carpenter and workmaster that laboreth night and day, it says, and they that cut and grave seals and are diligent to make great variety and give themselves to a counterfeit imagery and to watch to finish a work. Look at that. It says, the smith also sitting in the end and considering the iron work, the vapor of fire wasted his flesh. It says, and he fighteth with the heat of the furnace. We, you know, working hard, ain't he? It says, the noise of the hammer. Boom, 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 boom. And the anvil is ever, meaning always in his ears. And his eyes still look upon the pattern. Oh, look at that. Of a thing at which he make it. Okay, let me see. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Hmm. He set his mind to finish his work. And don't bother me. I got to get this done. And watch to polish it. Okay. All right. There. Boom, boom, boom. All right, I got to finish his work. Polish it up real quick. Mm -hmm. Right. Boom. Yeah, it look good there. All right. Nice. That's what we're reading here. It says perfectly. Verse 29, it says, So do the potter sitting at his work. Right? It says, And turning the wheel about with his feet, who is always carefully set at his work, and making all his work by number. It says, He fashioned the clay with his arm, and bowed down his strength before his feet. He applied himself to lead it over, and he is diligent to make clean the furnace. All these trust in their hands. Everyone is wise in his work. This is talking about nine to five, what you'll call today. Everyone is wise in his work. It says, without these, cannot a city be inhabited? We know that's common sense. So we need workers to do certain things. Why? Because a city wouldn't even be inhabited. But everyone is wise in their own work. So it says, and they that, I'm sorry, and they shall not dwell where they will. Meaning you're going to live where you want to live or where you will or wish. It says, no, I go up and down. Look, can't even travel. Look, there's no roads. And what's going on here? Nobody to do these things. So it says, verse 33, they should not, now look at what these people is talking about. Those who are doing these careers, these nine to fives, if you will. Look at what it says about them. They should not be sought for a public council, nor sit in the congregation. It says, nor sit in the congregation, they shall not sit on the judge's seat. That's why I was saying that back in 1 Timothy 5. How such and such up there being in the judgment seat and doing this and he doing that and he got a nine to five, he got a job. How can he sit and do this? His mind is on that all day. Get us to the person that learned man was coming by the opportunity of leisure, meaning free time, who got little business. That's the one that got the time on his hand. That's the one that's wise. Let's go seek him. Let's go seek him. Today, you get some people like, oh man, he's bummed. Yeah, you know, nah, don't go listen to him. But your Bible says in Sirach 38, 24, the wisdom of alarm man coming by opportunity of leisure. And he that have little business shall become wise. It says down in verse 33 that that uh they should not be sought out for public counsel. They can't do that. It says, nor sit high in the congregation. How are you a bishop? How are you a deacon? How are you doing that? How are you sitting high in the congregation? It says, they shall not sit on the judgment, judge seat. How are you over here making decisions, telling this person this and X, Y, and Z? Yeah, you can't do that. It says, nor understand the sentence of judgment. They cannot declare justice and judgment. 
And it say, and they shall not be found where parables are spoken. Earthly story, spiritual meanings, if you will. It says, but they will maintain the state of the world. And let's get them roles fixed. Let's get this done. Hey, brothers, we need some brothers over there doing this. Kind of like what we saw in Acts uh, 6 and 1. Like, man, look, we're not going to be waiting tables. We're not going to be doing this. We got other stuff that we could be doing, that we should be doing. Go put seven men over this. Let them do that. We're going to go in the word of God. That's what we're going to do. So everybody's called to do their job and everybody is wise. As it said here, everyone is wise in his work and his work, what he's called to do. Everybody ain't called to do what we're doing, teaching. It's not an easy job. And anybody who do this full time, you know, this is like, yo, this itself is like a nine to five. Yo, like for real, for real. Straight up. So dealing with that, it says, but they will maintain the state of the world and all their desire is in the work of what? Their craft has nothing to do with the congregation. That's not your job. Got to pick one or the other. This is for y'all of your congregations and everything and whatnot. That's just what it is. The books say what it says. Just get rid of the apocrypha. You don't want to deal with that. But look, that word leisure real quick. Look at that. Because again, it said the wisdom of a learned man. It says come by opportunity, opportunity of leisure. And he that have little business or task shall become wise. Want to become wise? clearly says right there a little business i mean if you look at the common sense of it if it's 24 hours in a day you sleep eight and you work eight that's already 16 hours gone plus you got to eat gotta do that how much time do you really have to do x y and z when you think about it but check it well i know somebody ain't gonna like that oh well let me click on that boom move this out the way and um yeah hey and once again, for the sisters who try to use Exodus 21, nope, can't leave your husbands. You know, because when you look at Exodus 21, uh, I did that video on this lesson uh, real quick. Let me read that real quick. Exodus 21 and verse 10. It says, if he take him another wife, her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage, shall he not diminish? And if he do not these three things unto her, then shall she go out free without money. And if you do not these three things unto her, then shall she go out free without money. When you see this video, Exodus 21, the polygyny myth, hey, that got put to bed, to bed. We go and deal in the Hebrew text and show what that really meant when Moses wrote that. Ooh, we, it ain't saying what you think it's saying. It says another right here though. Another wife right there. Oh, yeah, it does. It don't say that. But watch that video to find out what did that really mean? But anyway, the Ecclesiastes 38, what we just read. Um, let me click on it real quick. Um, define leisure. Leisure. It says, people with too much enforced leisure use a free time for enjoyment. Look at that opportunity afforded by free time to do something look at that he got free time on his hands so let's go back real quick um uh, show my screen again it says the wisdom of a learned man coming by opportunity of leisure free time and he that have little business not much business but little business shall become wise now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be doing more videos because I got a lot more to bring out, a lot more to clear up. But a lot of people have been taken out of context, um, people in the anti-poly community. And I'm leaving them with no excuse, no excuse. It's just going to be their feelings, y'all. It'd be their feelings. It'd be all right, though. But again, if you want to see these videos, go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com. You see up here? slash Judy the Shooter. It'll go there as well. And again, um, um, starting with that first Corinthians 7 and 2, man, really good video. Remember that, as I said earlier, 
It says, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, let every man have his own husband. Uh, concubine, what is a concubine? Because you get people, oh, it's a slave, and someone says a whore, and all of that. You see what that really is? I'm showing you in the Hebrew text also. Um, this one I heard talking about submission as well, um, and poly as well. Um, the Exodus 21, 10, and 11, that's the part one, but definitely, really part two. You really could watch part two all alone by yourself, really. But of course, you, if you want to get in depth lesson, you can definitely do a 10. But I did leave something out on purpose and I saved it for that one, which is part two. Um, you get son and son, you can't have them multiple wives in the same house. Oh, watch that. Watch that video. Ooh, we, you know, and I'm putting a lot more myths to bed. Um, this is a good one. Make submission great again, going into the Hebrew New Testament. And yes, there is a, um, a Hebrew New Testament as well. Um, for those who did not know that, there is a Hebrew New Testament. Let me show you right quick. Let me go ahead and pull it up. Okay. Okay, so yes, there is a Hebrew New Testament. See right here, Sefer to do Yeshua HaMashiach Ben Tabiv and Avraham. So the book of the uh, the lineage of Yeshua HaMashiach, which is Jesus, the Messiah, Ben Davi, which is the son of David, Ben, son of Abraham, son of Abraham, Abraham holy et Yisach. So Abraham gave birth to laughter or Isaac, but Yisach holy et Yaakov, and laughter and Isaac gave birth unto et Yaakov Jacob. But Yaakov holy et Yehuda, meaning and Jacob gave birth unto Judah, the et Echad, meaning and his brothers or his brethren so yes we do have that there as well and um yo it's going down it's going down so i got a lot more to be bringing out a lot more to show y'all um definitely go back uh review this video go back and read first timothy the fifth chapter it's talking about widows who are widows indeed widows um with a verse eight that they try to take out of context widows who was 60 years old and older who had a reputation for lodging strangers, washing the saints' feet, helping those of the afflicted, people like them who had who was well reported of, a part of a congregation, obviously, them. That's what I was talking about. You younger widows, it told y'all what to do that was under 60. Because clearly y'all waxing one time. And we already went over what that means. So, ladies and gentlemen. I need Yehuda Hayora. I am Judah the Shooter with another video. I'll be back, Most High willing. All praise to the Most High. Name is Only Begotten Beloved Son. Long live the King. Long live the King. Long live the King. Yahoo.